Hi, in this video I will demonstrate a really interesting new way to generate prompts for your visual AI models so that you can take a text represented like this as a knowledge graph that shows the main ideas inside and how they relate to one another, select some of the ideas, use the built-in AI to generate uh, an interesting prompt that connects those ideas in an interesting way, and then copy and paste that idea into your mid-journey or any other visual AI model that you use to generate an image that can serve as a visual inspiration or as an illustration for whatever text that you're working with. As an example, I will be using a book that I wrote and in fact I find it a very inspiring way to kind of look into the content of your own book that you're writing or any book that you're reading in a way that provides you some visual feedback on what images emerge when people read this book or when they will encounter it somehow. So I find it's very useful both for writers and readers because you can suddenly read uh, something in a non-linear way and also get an impression of the kind of connections that emerge in the imagination of people as they encounter whatever it is that you wrote. So if you're interested to learn how it works, keep watching and I will demonstrate step by step. I will be using Infranotus, the tool that I developed to visualize the text of the book and here I have it in a PDF file so all I need to do is just select this text. I can also take the PDF file, doesn't matter, then go to the apps, analyze new content, copy and paste the text, click visualize and then this text will be shown as a graph. Just to explain you how this graph works, the main ideas inside the book are shown bigger in the graph so you can clearly see what are the main concepts inside, like in this case it's scale and pattern and also growth and multiple dominant centers and so on. And then if the concepts are used in the same context, they will be closer to each other on the graph and they will also have the same color. In fact, this allows us to detect the topical clusters in this book. So we can clearly see that the main topics inside are rhythmical patterns, attractor scales, growth cycles, fractal variability, and then you have more topics here, natural cycle. So that gives you like a general idea of what the book is about. So that can also be a really good way to represent the content. However, what I want to demonstrate today is how I'm generating prompts for visual AI models using this graph. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to start from zooming in onto the ideas that I find relevant and interesting. I will not start with the main ideas of the book because uh, I already know what they're talking about. Rather, I will zoom into some parts that are underrepresented but that are still relevant to the content of the book. In this case, for instance, it's the ideas of dominant center rest. If I click on them, I see the other ideas they're connected to. So here it's dominant center, it's connected to growth, multiple scale, influence, and so on. So I'm going to select those, influence, multiple, maybe also growth. And I will also take scale because it's an important concept to the narrative of the book and also pattern, because it's also important. So I'm kind of taking a cluster that I find interesting, select all those nodes, and then also select the bigger nodes that connect to uh, those ideas that, that belong to the narrative of the book itself. Once I selected those, if I go to AI panel here, I can, by checking this derived from this context, generate a text that would connect all those ideas, but I will use the original text of the book as a, the inspiration for this prompt, right? So it's gonna use GPT-4, generate a statement. Here I have the statement. I copy and paste it. So for example here, based on dominant center, rest, influence, and so on, it generates a text in systems where a dominant center exerts influence. Periods of rest can catalyze the emergence of multiple growth patterns, scaling the impact and complexity of those patterns across various domains. So that's a really interesting topic because I'm talking about this in my book, how by removing the centers and moving them to the periphery temporarily, you actually free up the space for the new things to emerge, right? So I can also regenerate some ideas here and see that another way of thinking about it proposed by the built-in AI is that the interplay between dominant centers and multiple growth patterns reflects how resting influence can pivot the scale of emerging patterns, illustrating a dynamic balance where influence propagates through various scales to shape complex systems. So that's interesting because it's talking more about the different scales uh, on which it can operate, which is really great as well. And then here's another idea. So you can sort of regenerate through a few ideas like this and then um, when you see something that you like or that you would like to kind of think about further what you can do is to copy this and then you would go into Discord um, if you're using Midjourney or any other model and then you would just make a prompt, right? So I'm gonna write imagine and then prompt. 
and what I also like to do is to add my personal style so when you add this uh, it adds a personal style which it kind of trained from my preferences so it's going to generate an image which is uh, going to be more related to myself let's say and to what I like and then I use this S1000 to kind of maximize the influence of my style on the generation so it's going to take some time to generate um, but the result is is actually pretty interesting I'll, sh I'll show you some of the images I generated previously from the same book it kind of gives you like a nice abstract visual representation of uh, the ideas inside your book which I think is really amazing because I can use it myself as an inspiration to think further about this topic but not just using words but using the images and also it's quite good because I can kind of see what would pop up in the reader's head when they read my text so that I find is really exciting and as you can see here uh, when I put in this idea about multiple centers and how they emerge and give space to each other we actually have really interesting images here right so for example I can click here variation of image 4 and then ask Midjourney to generate some more versions of this really nice image uh, which you can see here on the screen right so that is actually a prompt generated from the knowledge graph based on the ideas that I chose to connect myself and then it came up with some interesting result which is actually a really good illustration but also it talks about this process kind of like uh, in movement and I'm really looking forward uh, when it's going to be possible to do the same with videos because then it's going to be much more interesting right so here it created some variations of that image and uh, now I can use them to sort of think about this concept further to contemplate on it meditate about it or even to write something else in relation to those ideas now I would usually deselect those topics and focus on something else for instance I can also search for something that I find interesting let's say body because I'm writing about the body in this book but it's not something I'm writing about a lot in this particular work so I'm going to see how it can be developed further I have body which is connected to the concept of representation and also I can see a link here to the concept of physical and state so that's pretty interesting and I'm gonna select also the concept of pattern and scale again and maybe even growth as well or no I will not select growth in this case I think I'm just gonna go for the pattern scale represent body and then I click again derive from this context so I use the content of the book to generate some ideas and then I click chat and then it means that it's gonna take the content of GPT-4 to generate some idea so for example here it says the body represents a physical manifestation of patterns on varied scales embodying the relationship between state scale and structure in tangible forms so that's quite interesting I can copy this see if there's anything else that I like the body manifest patterns so it's kind of the same let's regenerate a bit more see if it com comes up with something else uh, here can be quite interesting as well regenerate more and so on so on, until you find something you like and then you go back to mid-journey imagine that's how you use mid-journey then you copy your prompt um, specify that you wanted to use your style uh, to the maximum degree s1000 p and then it's gonna try to generate something what what you can also do by the way is uh, to actually give it some style so for example I can prefix um, this statement which was generated by the AI of Infernodus with uh, some kind of style direction so I can say uh, line art abstract single line art representing this idea right and then I write it in brackets make sure in this case I'm actually going to use less of my own style to see what happens and then as you can see here the first generation came up with some really interesting visualization of the body and kind of like the different scales of operation so here I almost have a like an idea for an art piece based on that imagine if you printed this top one in 3d for instance I think it could be really interesting right like a, an object that we have generated from text and uh, then here is also a nice image that I really like could also be some kind of like a sculpture or painting or even um, an illustration for the book as well right in here is also when I add a style I suddenly get like a really nice 
visualization that kind of gives me another perspective on this you know how how the body can operate at different scales and and how it also reflects some kind of truth about our existence and uh, and how it embodies relationships between all those different influences that we experience right so here we have an image generated from it and so on so basically you would just approach it like that selecting the ideas you like and then generating the images if you're an advanced user of Infernotus what you can also do is to select the most influential terms and then delete them from the graph temporarily so you can reveal the underlying topics you also have this available here in the conceptual gateways or you can also remove them by clicking the button here and then iteratively you can arrive to the process where uh, more latent ideas that are not so visible at the surface emerge because you're removing the top layer of the most obvious ones so to, to also give space to to the less represented ones right and then you select for instance natural balance fractal exploration and maybe I'm also interested to see how it's connecting to ensure survival you see those ideas if you click on relations they're not really connected they don't have common connections but they belong to this text so it can be interesting to use them for inspiration I'm gonna go here to the AI and then make sure that derived from this context is uh, checked also I don't have to do it by the way I can also deselect it and then it's gonna come up with a more open interpretation that will bring this text beyond the uh, its its own content so to say so here I have uh, exploring natural fractals lead to understanding how the inherent bar balance ensures the survival of ecosystems I can even ask it the AI that is built into Infernotus to, to elaborate. So I will ask it to just elaborate on the statement. Let's give it one more iteration. Use the context of the book to generate some idea. And here it says that natural fractals with their self-similar patterns at different scales embody resilience and efficiency in resource distribution crucial for ecosystem survival. This exploration reveals the adaptive strategies nature employs to maintain equilibrium. Actually, it's a really good idea. I'm going to save it to my notes. Maybe I'm going to include it into the next edition of the book or when I write an article about it. But I'm also going to copy this AI-generated prompt text and then ask Midjourney to generate something for me with this idea. Let's see what it comes up with. Um, again, I can choose to add a style. So if I want to add the style, I'm going to write uh, maybe a phase map scientific image of this concept. And then I'm just going to do like this. Then I use P to make sure it insists on my style that I trained earlier using the new mid-journey feature where you can train uh, the system to choose the kind of aesthetics that you like and then S1000 means use my style to the max and let's click here so you see natural fractals a again amazing images that I can use uh, in illustrations for the book uh, or that I can also use to just inspire myself to think about this concept further in a visual way not only using uh, the language but also images which I find really interesting as well right and uh, then if I want um, I can also let's say choose this image here and then create some variations of it upscale it maybe kind of zoom in see what else can be generated from it so there's really a lot of different options that we have when when we're working with that in fact I would be really interested to see if uh, any of the users of Infernotus that already use it for text analysis would like to have images generated directly inside here. Please leave a comment if you find it interesting. And uh, also what kind of styles you would prefer and what kind of models, because I personally like Midjourney, but sometimes it has a very recognizable style. So sometimes you have to train it a little bit to kind of move away from something that uh, it normally would produce. But here, for instance, is a really good example of how it integrates this idea of fractals and nature into an image that is kind of abstract but it's still very uh, sort of connected to something natural as well so, so I really like this as well so yes please let me know what you think about this way of using Infernotus and generating prompts for visual AI models and if you have any comments or questions please leave them in the comments below and also please subscribe to this channel so you can get informed about the new videos and that this video also can be recommended to others who are interested in the same topic. Thank you.